morning. This uh, message is dedicated to all the moms that are here. Of course. <laughs> I won't talk about the fathers today. <laughs> but let me start with this, uh, with this very uh, short story. There were three children who had, ve who had become very prosperous. They became really very wealthy and they had accumulated so much amounts of money. So these three children have discussed what gifts they're going to give their elderly mother for Mother's Day. So the first built a big house for his mother. And the second child had sent her a Mercedes with a chauffeur, with a driver included. And the third child felt that he outdid the other two with his gift. His mother had always enjoyed reading the Bible. And so in her older age, she could not see very well anymore. So this, this third child have sent her a very unique gift. It was in fact a remarkable parrot, a parrot that could recite the entire Bible. <laughs> wow! And you know what? It took it took trained professionals 12 years, imagine, to teach this parrot. Okay. So in short, he was one of a kind. Okay. So what the mother would do is just, he would just name the book, the chapter, and the verse. And the parrot would be able to recite it. Wow. Would you like that? No. No battery needed. So I like that. And so the children soon started receiving letters from their mom, thanking them for their gifts. To the first one, the mom said, Milton, the house you built is so huge. I live in only one room, but I have to clean the whole house. <laughs> and to the second one, she said, Margaret, I am too old to travel. I stay at home most of the time, so I rarely use the Mercedes. And besides, the driver is so rude. And then to the third one, he, she wrote, Dearest Donald, you have the good sense to know what your mother likes. The chicken was delicious. Uh-oh. Imagine all the trainings and all the years for that bird to be trained to read and recite all ended adobo. <laughs> you know what? Mother's Day is very, very special. Other than Easter and Christmas, it is the most attended Sunday of the year. <laughs> It's the most attended Sunday of the year. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because you know what? It seems that mothers just bring out the best in us. Do you agree? Yes. yes. And there's just something about moms, about mothers, isn't it? Yes. G. Campbell Morgan, he is um, a profound British preacher. And uh, in fact, he's got four sons, all of which became pastors. And they're not just pastors, but they influenced millions with his preaching, his teaching, and his writing. One Sunday, when his young son Howard finished preaching, a reporter asked him, Since you have five pastors in the family, who is the greatest preacher? So this reporter was just curious with all these five men preaching and which were really very good in what they're doing. And so the reporter was expecting that the son would give the honor to his father, who is the source of it all. But Howard, the son surprised this reporter by saying, the greatest preacher at home is my mother. 
You know what? I do believe with what he have said that often people do not realize that a mother's love, a mother's concern, and teachings are often far more influential on people than anything else. Probably if I may ask you or if I would even ask you if there is one thing that you still recall and that you still remember what your mother have told you and probably until this time that still influences or still affects you. Amen. You agree with me? You're silent or it seems it's not. <laughs> but never underestimate the power of a mother's love. And this morning I just would like to give a message where it is actually a view from the cross. What? Well, let's take the cross. The message that God has uh, placed in my heart or had spoken in my heart is, is a message that allows us to go back to the cross. Because this morning that is where our scripture is going to take us. To the cross. Jesus had been betrayed. Jesus was beaten and he was spat upon and he was humiliated. He was lying dying on a cross. It is the most humiliating way to impose punishment to anyone during those period. Anyone seeing him on the cross they would assume that he was either a thief or a murderer because he is being crucified because during that time in those uh, th those Roman times crucifixion is I would say the capital punishment it would be the most to any worst criminal that lives that need punishment so as Jesus was hanging on the cross all his disciples have deserted him all of his disciples have left him except for one and that is John. All his friends, they all ran away. And as the scripture have, is, have told us that the ten disciples, they were all cowering in fear in an upstairs room somewhere. But when Jesus looked down on the cross, Jesus saw his mother. And in fact, if I may take you to John chapter 19, verse 25 to 27, this is what it tells us. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother. Let me say that again. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother. And his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. So there were three Marys that were there. Mary his mother, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And in verse 26, when Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, and who is that? That is John, the beloved. Jesus said to her, dear woman, here is your son. And in verse 27, and he said to this disciple, or in effect, Jesus said to John, here is your mother and from then on this disciple John took Mary the mother of Jesus into his own as I read this scripture I was kinda wondering or thinking what Jesus was thinking as he looked down at his mother, what did Jesus see in his mother? You know what? The first thing that Jesus saw in Mary, his mother, was how a courageous mother was she. Please take note of this. Jesus saw a woman who had faced death in order to bring him into this world. Please take note of this. When Mary had received the news that he is going to be pregnant, 
You know, that moment, his life has been endangered. The Jewish people had laws, they have rules, they have regulations that, were, that they were bound by. And in fact, it is, I will bring it to you in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 23 to 24. If a man happens to meet in a town a virgin pledged to be married, and he sleeps with her, meaning they had a relationship. In verse 24, you shall take both of them to the gate of that town and stone them to death. The young woman, because she was in a town and did not scream for help, and the man, because he violated another man's wife, you must purge the evil from among you. By right, they could have been taken, especially her, to the town gate, and she could have been stoned to death. Because that is the punishment during that time. If you got pregnant and you are unmarried, that is tantamount to being stoned to death. If just in, just in case you suffered injustice, you got pregnant with no husband, but you shouted, rape! Somebody rape me! Probably they will hear your case and you will not receive the punishment. But in the case of Mary, she didn't cry rape. She stood up. She stood up. And she told Joseph that she had not been raped, but that her child was from God. What a courageous woman. I mean, upon the thought of her getting pregnant with no husband and thinking about death, you know what? What a courageous woman she was. She knew the law. She knew the rules. She knew the decrees. She knew what could happen to her. But she stood her ground in order to give birth to the Savior, to her son, to Jesus. I was kind of thinking, you know, what if Mary said no? What if Mary would just say, you know what, God, I've got a neighbor. She's better than me. <laughs> you know what, or another thought, she could have quietly left the town and told others that her husband was dead. And she had options, you know, options. She had so much, she had 1,001 options just to, to be able to escape death, punishment, or even persecutions. But you know what? She courageously stood her ground for whom? For Jesus, for her child, for the Savior. That's why the Bible says she was called blessed. Amen. Because of her courage to do all of that. You know what, through the years, you and I, we all have met courageous mothers. Mothers who will stand up for their children and do what is right. And even we see single mothers who have to raise their children by themselves because the fathers have to abdicate their responsibilities. And these courageous mothers fight every day for their children. These courageous mothers who take on the system because the things that are going on in our society are detrimental to their children. You know what? We admire these courageous mothers. And I see a lot of courageous mothers here in this gathering today. John Wayne once said, Courage is not really the absence of fear. He said, courage is being afraid or being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. That is courage. That is what Mary did. Don't you know that Mary was scared to death too? She had to be. But Mary did what mothers have done since the beginning of time. And what is that? She faced the danger because of the love for her son. You know what? I salute you mothers today for raising your children in courage. 
I salute all the mothers who have given up so much in life just to raise their children. And so I encourage all the mothers this morning to saddle up. Continue to be courageous for your children's sake. At times we want to give up. At, at times we just want to throw in the towel and say, I give up. But don't. Your children are worth fighting for. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. You missed to say amen. amen. Pastor Jay, I give up. <laughs> Can I just give my child, I mean, and, uh, and just uh, take her back when she's 18? <laughs> At times we come to that point that we just want to give them away. <laughs> right. At times really they uh, cause our hair to turn to gray. I remember the story of that little child who saw her mother that there are gray hair sticking out. And so she asked her, ma her, 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 her mother, Mom, your, I mean, uh, your hair, some of your hair are turning gray, she said. And so the mom said, you know what? Whenever you cause mommy to be sad, or whenever you make me cry, whenever you do all these unpleasant things, mommy's hair turn white. And so this, uh, this little girl pondered, and afterwards she said, is that what happened to grandma? <laughs> so all along it's the mom's fault why the grandma, grandma's hair all turned gray. But you know what, at times I mean our children really test us, our patience because I myself have encountered it, Pastor Jay. It's Mother's Day, not Father's Day, but <laughs> yeah, we're sharing this responsibility. Next, next thing, when Jesus looked at his mother from the cross, he saw a mother who was committed to God. First, she saw a courageous woman, courageous even to the point of life. Amen. Being sacrificed. Mary's commitment to God is shown in her acceptance of what God had planned for her. Imagine, let me talk to the ladies here, to the, to the single ladies. You are a single lady? You are a single lady? Okay. You are a young woman. Young woman. Mary, during that time, according to biblical scholars, she's in her teenage years, probably 15 or 16 year old. Okay, who is uh, among our young people within that age, 15 or 16? Is there anyone among us here? So Julian or Hazel, not Tonet, I'm not talking about, I'm not saying 60 sister, I'm not saying 60, I said 16. Just kidding. Oh, in your mind, you're, you're 16. That's why it shows, <laughs> just kidding. All right, imagine a teenager uh, with the age of these girls that are here, Hazel or uh, Julian, 15, 16 year old. And imagine, okay, an angel will appear to you, okay? An angel appears to you and tells you, you know what, Julian, you're gonna get pregnant. What? <laughs> oh <my. laughs> Look at the reaction of Sister Grace in there. <laughs> Imagine, Sister Grace, the reaction of Mary's mom. That she's going to get pregnant. 16 year old. That you're going to be pregnant while you are still a virgin. Okay. I don't know about you, but probably the initial response, or probably my response would be, say what? <laughs> and in Luke chapter 1 verse 29, we see that Mary was confused. She was disturbed, wondering what the angel meant. Probably, she could not really analyze in her young mind what the angel was saying. And you know, that could be the understatement of the century. 
most of us would say, are you kidding me? Who are you? Are you really an angel? Or probably Mary could have said, have you lost your mind? But the angel continued to give her some information. And in fact, in the next slide, in Luke chapter 1, verse 38, and then moving to 46 and 47, Mary responded, it's not in there, brother dudes, Luke chapter 1, verse 38. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. What? That is kind of hard to grasp. I mean, a teenager getting pregnant with no father. But then she said, May everything you have said about me, may it come true. And then the angel left her. In verse 46 and 47, Mary responded, How oh, well, my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Have you seen the faith of Mary? Even though there is uncertainty in there, but he rejoices, he praised God. Because he put her trust, more than circumstances, more than the things that she sees, but she put her trust in God. It just showed forth her commitment to God. Before she understood exactly what was going, what was going on in her life, Mary already have committed herself to God. She have said, I am the Lord's servant. Whatever you need from me, I will do, Lord. Hallelujah. How I pray that all of us, we all have this kind of heart and attitude. Be it done to me, Lord, according to your word. Not only was she committed to God before Jesus' birth, she was to meet, committed to God after birth. You know what? Before is one thing but the after that is another thing so in the next slide we would see that Jesus was also to committed I mean Mary was also committed to bring Jesus up in the ways of the Lord first after eight days guess what Mary did after Jesus birth on the eighth day she followed God's command. Jesus was brought to circumcision. And after 40 days of Jesus' birth, guess what she did? She brought Jesus to the temple to be offered to be dedicated unto the Lord. She took him to church. They took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem and Jesus was presented before God. And then we read in Luke that Mary and Joseph moved back to Nazareth. And that is where Jesus grew in wisdom. And our theory was that Jesus grew in wisdom because Jesus grew literally in the church or in synagogues. And he was exposed to the scriptures. And in fact, it testifies that in Luke chapter 2 verse 21, every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. So, people of God, listen to me. Especially the moms that are here. Jesus' mother had committed his, I mean her son, to church. Basically, all that Jesus had become was because of his mother Mary. Are you with me today? Are you with me today? Amen. So let's put it this way. If Mary thought that the Son of God needed to go church, how important do you think that it is for our children to attend church as well? It is in church that we reinforce the values, the beliefs that we are child that we are teaching our children at home. I remember a story about there was a little old lady who was so amazed at how nice the young man 
that lived next door to her. Every day, this young man would help her gather things from her car or help her in her yard. One day, the old lady finally asked this young man, Son, how did you become such a fine young man? The young man replied, Well, when I was a boy, I had a drug problem. The old lady was shocked. I can't believe that. The young man replied, It's true. My parents drug me to church on Sunday morning. They drug me to church on Sunday night. They drug me to church on Thursday night. So I was drugged as a kid. You know what, people of God? Especially the moms, the dads that are here. We need to drug our children to church. I mean, I'm not saying to give narcotics in what they drink so that they'll be loopy and drowsy and they're not in themselves that they are here that's not the point the point is that they were being taken to the church like the church is something that is so important in their life because we believe that the church it is here that they see modeled for them the worship of our God it is here that they see the way we worship the Lord, the way we give reverence for God, the way we give time in worshiping Him. It is here that they learn the timeless stories of the Bible. It is here where the Proverbs that read, train up a child in the way that he, that, where he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That is where they hear it. The training that they need to go. It is here that we help you mothers ground your children in the belief of God. You know, it's kind of unfortunate that your children, my child as well, as they go to school, God is not promoted in school. Even in the mention of God, even in the mention of, of the Bible, a teacher could lose his or her job. It was amazing that my wife, a uh, uh, co-worker, uh, her daughter was with us last night. And I was, uh, sh she is the uh, same age as Christelle. They're both six years old. Six years old. And so she was talking about, uh, she was talking about school. So I was asking her about what grade she was. She, was, she, she said she's in the kindergarten, just like uh, uh, Christelle. But... But then out of a sudden she said, you know what? She said, I wasn't asking, but just came out from her mouth. You know what? In the school where I go to, we cannot talk about God or teachers will lose their job. Really? And so she said, you know, I've got a friend who go to, uh, she was referring to a Christian school. She go to a Christian school where they could talk about God. But in my school, we can never talk about God. You see, people of God, we are living here in America. We are not an uncivilized or we are not somewhere in the mountains that we have not heard anything about God or so, things like that. But we are civil civilized, the most sophisticated people on earth. But here we are. We can never talk about our faith. We can never talk about religion. We can never talk about God without losing our jobs. Because for them, God would be offensive. So look at it this way. If your children do not hear anything about God in their school, they stay there most of the time. How many hours every day? Five, six hours, Monday to Friday. And they don't talk anything about faith, about religion, or anything about God. And then don't bring them to church. What would they learn? Could you blame them when they grow up that they are agnostic atheists, that they do not believe anything at all? Can you blame them? No. Because somewhere along the way, we failed. We failed to teach them, people. We failed to teach them that there is a God, the existence of God, that faith is important. And so, it just communicates to them the way we value church, the way we value uh, the, the time we come to church on Sunday. If, 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 you're, if you say, you know what, let's, let's skip church today. Let's just go to the park. Oh, let's just go here. Let's just go there. You are communicating to them that 
God is not important. That God can be set aside. That church is not important. Faith is not important. It can be set aside. These are the priorities. That's why you know what? When they grow up, we won't blame them. Statistics reveal that when teenagers, I mean when these children are on their own after 18 year old, they don't go back to church. Because all along, church has not become a part of them and they have not established real relationship with God, with the Savior. That's why you are shocked. Amen? The rebelliousness, the way they talk to you, the way they, they despise you, it is as if they're going to eat you alive. That is how kids are. It's because they have not developed the fear of God. Fear of the Lord comes only as we bring our children as they hear. At least I would say to the least that they hear something about the Lord. In school, if you expect them to teach about God, forget it. It won't happen. Are you with me today? So as we bring them to church, it's like what Mary have done to Jesus, why Jesus had grew up in wisdom and in all that he is, it is because of Mary. I pray mothers that we must be like Mary and be committed to God in bringing our children unto the Lord's house. Mothers, you must also be committed to God in your particular life. In order for us to bring our children in a godly home, mothers, my challenge to you this morning, you yourself, you must know God. How can you give something that you do not have? How can you tell somebody that you do not know? What's my point? My question to some of the moms that are here today, do you know the Lord in your life? Have you placed your faith and your hope, your trust and salvation unto Jesus Christ? But praise God, this might be the most memorable Mother's Day for some. You might, it might be the day, or this day might be the day that God will grant you the opportunity to know Him and to trust your life unto Him. Now, when Jesus looked down at his mother, he saw a woman of courage and also a woman of commitment. Much like the mothers that I see here this morning. But let's put it this way. As Mary looked up at her son on the cross, what did Mary see? Let's go back to John chapter 19, 26 and 27 verse. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. Or just like saying mom or mother, from this moment on, he, John, he will become your son. And then verse 27 to John, he said, John, from this moment on, my mom Mary will be your mother. And so the conclusion there and from then on, this disciple took her into his home. When Mary looked at her son hanging there on the cross, she saw a son that loved her and was concerned about her. Hallelujah, I love that. You know what, I have not seen it that way. I thought when, I know that this is one of the seven last words that we hear, that woman behold your son, and son behold your mother, because I thought, how disrespectful, but no it wasn't. I did not see it till now that it was said in a very different way. That you know what, before I would go there, back in the 70s, uh, how many people are already living and alive back in the 70s? Well, there's a, there's a song during that time that's uh, probably popularized by James Brown, and the song is, uh, This is a Man's World. Okay, And I think the hitman returns, I think Seal sang that with, uh, with uh, who's that guy? With Tonette's favorite singer, Michael Bolton. This is a man's world. You know what? Let me tell you the truth. Back in the days of Jesus, it was really a man's world. What do you mean, Pastor Jay? 
Because during the time of Jesus, women had no rights. Just like probably until this time. In the Middle East, women have no rights. They have no rights. If there are slim chances that they could own property, that would be very, very slim circumstances. That would be a very unusual circumstances. But in other words, let me put it this way. Women during those times, they needed a man to take care of them. So a woman could not just take care of herself. She need to be somebody's care. A man who would be taking charge of her. So Jesus' love and concern for his mother stands out there. Amen? Isn't that precious? I mean, woman, this is your son. Starting today, he's going to... Because if Jesus wouldn't have died and wouldn't have crucified, Jesus will take the responsibility over his mother. But the, now that he has to go away, he is giving that responsibility to his best friend. Out of all the people, out of all the, uh, the, the twelve, it is only John who did not desert him, who did not run away for his life. He stood at the cross of Jesus. You know what? What courage John stood up as well he could have meant being killed during that time because he was identified with a criminal he refused to let uh, to go if John was a coward he would have left as well but he did not he stood there he was ready to die and so he was entrusted with his precious mother he looked at his friend John the only apostle that was brave enough to come to the cross and told him to take care of his mother you know what? Jesus showed his love and his concern for his mother even up to his dying breath. I know that this is Mother's Day, but I want to address all the sons and all the daughters that are here as well. Let us learn from Jesus in his dying declaration. Jesus showed the world how much he loved his mother by providing for her. After he was gone. Did the, Jesus did not just leave. And then just left Mary out there. But she really made it a point. That her. I mean uh, that Mary. His mother. Is being well taken care of. Hallelujah. Are you with me today? Are we still like that? Amen. I admire those people who up to this time. I mean, they grown ups, they have their own families, but the care, the concern that they show forth to their parents is just so outstanding. Hallelujah. I pray. I know we Filipinos, we are known for that. We are family oriented. I mean, we just love our families. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that it's, it, it, it's the same, it's the same, um, it, it's the same culture that a Jewish people have they take care of their own they do not just leave them on nursing home somewhere and just call them once in a while but after that as if they're non-existent anymore but you know what Jewish people they really take care of their old hallelujah and I pray you do the same amen sons and daughters our mother needs to know that we love them amen as much as they love us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Do you agree with that? Amen. Always be concerned about them. Because I guarantee you this. Your mother is always concerned. About you. About me. Mary can model motherhood for us this morning. I pray that she would be. A great inspiration and encouragement for all the moms that are here. Moms, we need to be courageous. We need to stand up for our children. We need to be committed to God in raising our children in the ways of the Lord. And children, we need to love. We need to honor our mothers. Out of all the Ten Commandments, honor your mother and your father and you will live long in the land. Out of all those Ten Commandments, this is just the command from the Lord that has an attached blessing to it. That as we honor our parents, as we obey, love, respect them, the blessing of God is that we will live long. Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. That God will bless us with long life as we honor the Lord. You know, it still is true. Hallelujah. As we honor them. I pray today that children, all children that are here, that we are not just doing this because it's Mother's Day. That after this tomorrow, you know, Pastor Jay, tomorrow is the end of Mother's Day, so I could go back to <laughs> what I'm doing. <laughs> no. Because the command of the Lord, honor your parents, it is timeless. There is no specific time limit or time frame on it, but in all the days that we live, our honoring of them should always be there. And when I talk about honor, it is the respect. Amen. The respect that they deserve. Hallelujah. The love that they deserve. I know for some of us there might be painful memories or experiences with our parents. But you know what? God always heals. And it always brings us to the truth and to the fact that in spite of what happened. In spite of probably painful childhood experiences with your parents. But no. That we still need to honor. Because that is what God is telling us to do. Otherwise, there is a commandment, rebel to your parents. Talk back. Fight back. No, we won't find anything like that. But it just tells us that we have to honor them while we have the opportunity. Blessed are those children who still have their parents with them. You know, Mother's Day would always be full of different memories. Some it would be happy, delightful sweet moments but for some it is painful hurtful some do not even want Mother's Day to come because it just brings a painful memory of the loss that they have something that is in connection with mom or with mother or whichever of that but I pray today whatever thing that happened that took place I pray God could just turn all of those into something that is sweet and something that is wonderful, something that is worth remembering. Amen. It's not too late. Amen. Amen. Children, wayward children. When I say way, wayward, rebellious children, to make it, <laughs> to make it clear, rebellious or or, or um, children that are stubborn or hard-headed. It's not too late. We can still change. We can still ask for God's grace to change us. Hallelujah. And for us moms that are here, God bless all of you. We honor you. We thank you for all the sacrifices and all that you have done for us. Because without you, we are not here.